Okay, this is section 18.2, entropy. So we're now going to talk about the second factor, which determines the spontaneity of a process. Again, the spontaneity is essentially uh, the tendency of something to occur under a set of conditions. For example, if you drop a ball, it tends to fall down. That's a spontaneous process. If you release a ball, it doesn't tend to fall up. That would be a non-spontaneous process. If we take a gas and confine it in a balloon and then pop that balloon, the gas will have a tendency to spread out into the room. That's a spontaneous process. However, a gas does not tend to coalesce or condense from a room into a balloon if you open the balloon up. That's a non-spontaneous process. So the issue is spontaneity. Spontaneity, I'm sorry, entropy. Entropy is really a measure, a statistical uh, interpretation of this would be that entropy is a measure of the dispersion of energy. Okay? So for example, if you think about an explosion, you have a chemical explosive. What does a chemical explosive do? It essentially breaks apart into smaller particles, right? A crude approximation of what happens. So you have some sort of ordered molecule or an ordered substance. It's a solid, right? And what does it do? It explodes. It produces large numbers of gas molecules. So we would call this disordered substances. And they would be gases. So for example, if we take, um, let's take, trinitrotoluene. Let's try trinitrotoluene. Um, C7 H3 and 3O6. Okay, let me show you the molecule here. Make sure I get the chemical formula right. Okay, looks like I got the chemical formula wrong, so let's fix that. So it's C7H345. Looks like it's 5. And then N3, O6. That molecule, in a sense, is unstable, and what it will do is it will break up into carbon dioxide molecules. So this is a solid H2O molecules and N2 molecules. Okay? So what has happened is it's gone from a highly ordered substance, one compound in a solid form, into a larger number of gaseous molecules which fly off into space. Okay? So we're moving from an ordered substance to a disordered substance. Entropy, in a sense, is a measure of how the energy which is contained in this molecule, how that energy is distributed. 
And so for a process like an explosion, essentially what happens is the energy is contained in a very ordered manner based on the structure of the molecule. In this case, it, that energy is then converted into less ordered substances. And so the less ordered substances means that the energy is being dispersed more randomly and less in a less ordered fashion. Okay? So entropy is really a measure of how the energy is dispersed within these substances. Okay? Now, in general, when we, in chemistry, when we deal with entropy, one of the ways we deal with it is through what we call uh, positional entropy. Meaning, it's not that easy to measure the energies and how the energies are distributed, but essentially the distribution of energies, the dispersion of energy, tracks with the positions of the atoms and the molecules that we're studying. So for example, if I take a collection of gas molecules and confine them into a small space, so all those gas molecules are in there, we would say that the molecules are confined into a very narrow space Therefore, their energies are confined to a very narrow distribution. So if you were to measure the energies of these molecules, so I'm going to put energy on the x-axis, and then this is the number of molecules on the y-axis, you would have a very narrow distribution of energies. So we would say this is a low entropy. Okay, but now suppose I open up this first little doorway here, and then suddenly those molecules expand into a larger volume, right? Now what would happen is the dispersion of this energy would become much more broad, right? So there would be all kinds of energies that these molecules could exist at. So what we're doing is we're tracking their positions but relating that to energy because they're in some sense connected to each other. So in this case we would say this is a larger or greater entropy. Okay, so we're measuring the positions but we're relating that to entropy. And then suppose I open up the second door here and so now these molecules are free to spread out all the way across. Okay, well now we're really opening up all kinds of possibilities for these energies, and it's going to be a very broad distribution, right? So this would be even greater. Of the three, this would be the largest entropy. Okay? So when I say positional entropy, what I mean is if we move mole allow molecules to have a wide range of possible positions and orientations, that would correspond to a large entropy. If they're confined to a very small space and very f little freedom to move, that would correspond to a, s a very low entropy. And you can actually quantify it. Boltzmann actually quantified it with a very simple equa equation. What Boltzmann said is that entropy, and we're going to use the symbol S for entropy, is equal to a constant K. That's not the rate constant from kinetics, although it is in a sense, there is a relation between them. Between them. This is what's called the Boltzmann constant. This constant times the natural log of the number of possible positions in the state that we're looking at is a mathematical definition of entropy. And this Boltzmann constant has been measured experimentally and is equal to 1.38 
times 10 to the minus 23 joules per Kelvin. Okay, that's called the Boltzmann constant. So if you think about it, then suppose that it's not like a real situation that we would see in chemistry, but suppose that I had an atom and that atom could lie on in four possible states. It could be in state one. Or it could be in state two. Let's make a little room here. The atom could hop over here and be in state 3. Or the atom could hop over here and be in state 4. How many possible positions are there for that atom? There's also obviously 4, right? It's either in 1, 2, 3, or 4. So we would say in this case that the number of possible states would be 4. And so for this very simple system, the entropy would be the Boltzmann constant, K, times the natural log of 4. Now, when we look at actual real samples, real situations, the numbers are much larger, right? So, for example, if we have a mole of atoms confined to some volume, right, so a mole is Avogadro's number, That's a very large number, right? So that's, that's a more realistic situation in chemistry is that we have these large numbers. So the number of possible positions or arrangements could end up being very, very large. Okay? So um, that is a way of thinking about entropy as um, we'll see as we move on through the next sections. There are ways to calculate entropy. There are ways to tabulate entropy. And we'll find that this entropy is related to the spontaneity of chemical processes.